So now we have the, this is off, is it? Is this off? Yeah, it's on. Chair of the 2415 uh, Working Group, uh, Voin uh, Zygdanovich. Zygdanovich, yeah. Close, uh, close <laughs> enough. People, you should get an easier name like mine. Okay. Okay, thank you, Voin. So first I have to say, these are not my slides. Somebody changed them. So, <laughs> yes, Dan, sorry. It's, it's <laughs> syntax kidding. versus semantics, right? This is just, just, this just is syntactic just, sugar. Just kidding. Just kidding. Uh, thanks for this opportunity. I'm glad to be here a uh, second year in a row. It's always a pleasure in this circle to exchange some uh, views and, uh, you know, uh, obviously actions are following these views and, and opinions. But uh, yes, we spoke last year here about what we are about to do and now we are one year ahead and a lot of things uh, really happened. So I will be talking about P2415. The official name is Unified Hardware Abstraction for end layer for energy proportional electronic devices. So as you see, the word energy is gradually replacing the word power, not only in <clears throat> our standard, but also in 1801. Okay, my name is Boyn Zivarjnik. I'm the founder and CEO of the company Agios. It's a startup in the domain of uh, software-defined power management. Uh, th this is the slide which I think is, is uh, one slide, but very important to us. Exactly as Stan said, uh, when we started uh, running the uh, first thoughts about what is next in low power, and Yatin was running this uh, study group actually for quite a while, um, we knew that there will be a couple of views, a couple of directions the problem could be addressed. And, uh, what you see here is really what came out are these three approaches uh, which fit pretty well together. 2416, I'm sure Jerry will talk about that. 1801, I just gave an overview. And then 2415, which as we say here, is the unified power abstraction of components and the whole device for, and you please note, firmware, OS, and apps development. So very software-centric, a uh, little bit may be strange for the EDA-centric organization, but uh, you will see in my slides that without software, pretty much nothing works these days. Um, yes, we are looking to connect uh, power energy design flow and hardware and software IP producers integrators, but I think the best analogy you should have in mind is really the top-down approach and then the uh, other standards as the stalactites and stalagmites on, 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 on building uh, uh, the standard. Now, of course, it should not take that long as a cave needs to build the stalactites and stalagmites. So when it comes to devices, just to set the scene, um, P2415 is looking to describe the power uh, of the whole device. This is a board uh, reference design of a set-top box uh, originally manufactured by MindSpeed, which was then whose technology and, and um, assets were required, acquired by Freescale. And uh, you, you can see here that it's not really about the SOC. Yes, there is an SOC in the middle, um, but there's uh, plenty of other components which build the system. And then the system occasionally doesn't consist only of one motherboard. It consists of other parts which are needed for this whole device to operate. Think about desktop computers, for example. Now, the SOC is important, and uh, here's an example of uh, a quite sophisticated SOC from Xilinx, which contains uh, not only a, a, a significant number of highly powerful cores, but also programmable logic, which can suddenly appear as other cores or be just, uh, uh, you know, appear as, as hardware accelerated. And then the IP all over the place here is from uh, uh, Synopsis Design, where you have plenty of uh, small bits and pieces, extremely important that your device has proper connectivity and that you don't waste your time on developing certain IP which can be bought uh, off the shelf. So um, we looked at, initially when we started this, this whole project, we looked at the design and verification flow uh, in its entirety. So basically starting with the IP provider, uh, semiconductor company who is taking the IP and building uh, a chip uh, through first going through their VLSI circle or cycle, probably first with 
dealing with architecture and putting pieces together and so on. This piece of silicon mostly ends on the table of OEMs in terms of a reference design, and then reference design is giving life through software, and this software really makes the product, and uh, especially the differentiation because we have a lot of uh, very similarly looking boards who are ending in very different devices. So what I'm trying to emphasize here is that we have both hardware, which is the upper part in, in bluish, and then the softer flow, which actually happens simultaneously. When you develop and you make a decision about the IP component, at the same time, you definitely will be asking for a driver because you don't want to miss that part. Now, when it comes to the SOC flow where you build these uh, components together, you are uh, definitely needing to know what is going to drive that uh, SOC in terms of the firmware as well as the, uh, in this particular case, the OS power management. So there is a simultaneous notion of impact which is coming from the software all the way. And interesting enough, we do co-design and co-verification simultaneously. And I'm here, I have annotated here, co-design is when an IP provider uh, delivers a hardware piece of IP, it has to deliver also the um, respective piece of driver support. But at the same time, it looks at the complete system to verify now this one component as part of the next stage, which is the SOC and then the board. We have a lot of discussions in this um, organization about how far should 2415 go targeting software and software synthesis for firmware and software verification, and how much is that different from virtual prototyping? And I was free to basically say that the basics are totally the same, just in virtual prototyping, we are running the design flow backwards. We are making assumptions all the way to the end use of device and then taking these effects all the way down to that what we're interested. So very happy to take a discussion. I don't think we need in terms of power the distinction between implementation and prototyping because one and the other have to be used to properly used to, to reach the end goal. But definitely, uh, you know, uh, some of the standards are talking more about modeling and others are talking more about representation. Effectively, they are describing the same piece of IP and the same aspects of that IP. At the end of the day, what is important is that power and energy are not only impacted by the hardware you put together, but also by the software. Actually even more is software playing a key role in the total capabilities of your device, of your board, SOC, or IP. And this is also a consequence of the consistent convergence between different designs. When we look now the mobile phone designs, desktop computer designs, gaming console designs, IoT designs, you will see that we are having very similar architecture uh, which the power management faces. It has the main course, it has the real-time course, it has a power management course which are lower power and faster and react, which normally communicate with the PMIC. So you see very similar uh, architectures in a variety of applications. What is also important for all of them pretty much whether they are plugged or they are mobile or the IoT, it is really about energy and, and power. So we think that um, the goal of IEEE P 2415 is really to connect the software and the hardware world uh, into this, what we call it, power-connected hardware software flow. Let's talk a little bit about the models. And uh, it's, it's not rocket science. Actually, every single component we deal with, whether it's a transistor, whether it's an IP component like a, a USB controller or it's a complete SOC, really can be boiled down to three buttons which, which, with which you can change this component's power consumption. 
uh, well known are frequency and voltage. Change the frequency, you change the voltage. And on top of that is the workload or the mode of operation, right? So obviously if there are more transitions going on, more uh, activity in the component, you will see uh, a higher power consumption. So this divides on the test really boils down to these three elements of change, which are key. And managing those properly in proper sequence with proper signals, and I will emphasize dependency between those, is the key to success of devices. Most of that today at the software level is done either out of the box with the OS power management you get from uh, Windows or Linux, or you have to tweak that to uh, make it as efficient as you expect your iPhone to be efficient or your iPad. The basic equation at the end of the day, however, involves on the energy side also the time instance. And that was also a topic of a lot of discussion we had about events and time. How much events in time should be modeled at the level of 1801, how much it should be 2415 or uh, 2416. So now, when it comes to the complete system, you take all these individual blocks and you have to build a complete uh, power system model. Our claim, again, is that software is the key ingredient for any system power energy model. You can nicely say, no, why? I, I don't need that. I have my processor, AXI bus, and memory. I put a controller on APB or an AXI. Uh, this is the, my budget. That, however, assumes either, A, that all your devices are all on all the time on the full power, or all devices are off all the time. Both are rarely happening. You're all the time somewhere in between. So the question is, how is software impacting? And we know very well it's impacting the power consumption in a major way. Looking at the differences at different nodes and uh, geometric nodes, in the SOC designs of the best mobile phone versus the worst mobile phone, you will see that they're not worlds apart on that. Where they are worlds apart is in the fine tuning, how the complete system from the transistor all the way to the application level is integrated as we know that from the most successful companies in the mobile business. So yes, ultimately the equation is that you sum up all these uh, powers and all the energy consumed by the CPU, by the memory control, the DRAM, but the things are a little bit more complex because you have the power management and it is always triggered by events we generate out of the software. You can say, no, interrupt is not software. It is. Interrupt has to jump on a certain address and the first instruction are picking up what are you going to do with that interrupt. So ultimately, here we are showing that Power management for our uh, work, as we put it together, comes from uh, uh, three, uh, in three major flavors. It's the conceptual power management, which is really basically reacting on the events and assuming that I press my sleep button on the desktop and conceptually it's going into a lower power state. The next one is the qualitative, which effectively is doing the all the control of voltage, frequency, and so on, but without measuring what's the consequence. And this is, I would say, the majority of power management done today. Your Windows, uh, uh, Android, Windows platforms barely make estimates of energy consumed. The third one I left out is doing that. If you look at the source code of the drivers which are public, you will see a lot of annotations for accurate measurement of the energy and power consumed. And this is what we call quantitative power management. So our goal with 2415 is really to cover all of them, but the toughest point is the quantitative power management. And this is where we definitely need help from 1801. And this is why the initial picture looked like 2415. And then you see multiple models coming from 1801 and 2416, which feed into the complete system. Dependencies are key. For power management on the software side, there are certain dependencies you, you cannot uh, uh, underestimate their importance. It's rule of thumb. If you on the paper, before you do the final testing, have, say, um, 
X number of degrees you could ultimately optimize, uh, you will be probably to 10% of that when all the dependencies sort out what really is implementable. So on the paper, it's 100. When it comes to realization, it's 10, and even less. And this can be quite frustrating if you start with great components and great software, but when you put that all together, it simply uh, uh, does not work that, that, that easy. Uh, and these are component dependencies, they're also event dependencies, meaning the time is a notion which has to be uh, taken into account, that a certain sequencing of events has to happen in a proper order. And here is a picture of the power management unit, the CPU as a peripheral, and exactly who to whom can communicate in what moment. Of course, this type is generated latency. And latency is really the trade-off. Without latency, we could turn everything instantaneously on and off, so we would keep pretty much everything off until we really need it. The key is latency. We cannot simply do that. So here's one recommendation which we made um, in part of the discussion, and I think we evolved it now a little bit. Uh, for the software people, it would be fantastic if we, if we could have a meta model interface view into the hardware world. And it relates nicely to the information model Sushma spoke about. It will be kind of an interface which is a query interface, you know, where you basically query the components where everything was in database to get the proper answer. I don't have, I, I have examples from companies doing something for their internal design flow, but I'm, I don't have a specific proposal. The key is that for the software world, being able to understand 1801, 1801S system C, RTL, uh, CTS, Liberty, IP exact, which they might need, could be an overwhelming task. We will never get the software guys to really deep dive in all these standards. Gonna need to, gonna need, gonna need to wrap up. Yeah, so the last picture is really how uh, our colleagues from Broadcom put all that together and how they uh, related and have seen the largest advantages uh, of, uh, of using IEEE P2415. Um, it, is, it is really focused on implementation, and I think it's good so, because if we do a good implementation support, we'll be, I think, very well prepared to deal with the challenges that we have. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank you.